fellow believers in Christ Jesus. With all of the atrocities and struggles, strife and woes playing out these days all around us, some may tend to believe God has condemned us, and what we are experiencing is His punishment being applied upon us for our sins and wrongdoings. Well, such a notion isn't in agreement or accordance with the Word of God. Let's see what insight the Holy Bible provides regarding condemnation. May God be with us. Amen. I'm Pastor Bill King. This is Bill King Ministries. And as always, I thank you for being here. The title of my message is Spiritual Condemnation, Not of the Flesh. Condemnation is defined as censor or blame, the act of judicially commit condemning, the state of being condemned, and a reason for condemning. Synonyms are rebuke, reprimand, and that is found out of the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Now, since the dawn of all creation and God assigning the care and nurturing of the world into the hands of man, that is, Adam and Eve, and their dismal failure in obeying his commandment not to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and evil, his cursing them and their subsequent generations to follow, life has been plagued with toil, strife, sickness, pain, suffering, and even death. Thus is the punishment, the curse, he poured out upon mankind for the sins of our father, Adam, referred to as generational sin. And in quoting Genesis three, sixteen through 19, To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception, in pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweet, in the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Though such may be perceived by some as extreme and unjust, bear in mind God is the supreme power and authority in the universe, which he himself created by his word. He spoke, and it was so. Thereby his commandments stand and shall be obeyed, regardless of whether we, his creation, agree with them or disagree. It's not about us. It's about Him. And just as with any earthly father or mother, worth their weight in a grain of salt, He rebuked man. Now to perceive or, and or state all the negatives in life we are experiencing and seeing played out before us daily is God's condemnation upon us which would be a clear indication he doesn't care, doesn't have emotions and feelings, nor has plans for our betterment, is to deny the word of God. For he sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, unto the world to suffer and die a most excruciating death upon the cross of Calvary, propitiation for all the sins of man, thereby affording any and all who believe in him and his Son a ways and a means of escaping from evilness and sin, that being eternal salvation through faith in Jesus by His grace. 
does such sound as if he is uncaring, unjust, and void of consideration for us? I dare say not. For in quoting John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How, how may we be assured and reassured what we are experiencing and observing isn't condemnation? Apostle John provides the answer in the next verse, in quoting John 3.17, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. How may we be assured and reassured Jesus Christ is the answer? The escape from sin and death that we seek or should seek? In quoting John eight twelve, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. In quoting John 14, 2. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also, and where I go you know the way you know. Condemnation, as previously defined, is judgment for one's sins, that is, unrepentant sins. For if we have faith in Jesus as the Son of God, earnestly repent of our sins unto him, he shall answer us, and forgive. Quoting Acts 3.19 Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that, the, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Jesus forgave innumerable sins, sinners of their sins throughout his three-year ministry as in the biblical narrative in the book of Luke, where, wherein the sinful woman washed Jesus' feet with her tears, dried them with her hair, and anointed him with fragrant oil. That was in Luke seven, thirty-six through 47 And his response to her? Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Luke seven, forty eight. Granted, there will come a day of condemnation, whereupon unrepentant sinners will stand before Jesus in final judgment. But such shall not be while in the flesh, rather in the spirit, after the first death. In the first death, we find referenced in Genesis two seventeen in saying, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Physical death has occurred, and, a soul, and their souls have ascended to heaven, whereby once judged, condemned, and found unworthy, they shall be cast into the eternal fires of hell, right alongside Satan, the beast, and the false prophet, condemned to suffer for their unrepentant sins for all eternity, the second death. And that's referenced in Revelation twenty fourteen, in saying, Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. How do we know this? In quoting Revelation twenty fifteen. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast 
into the lake of fire. Now, Apostle Paul, he had this to say regarding condemnation, confirming the point of this message. There is no condemnation on earth for those who are saved by faith in Jesus, by God's grace. And I'm quoting Romans 8, 1 through 5. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemns sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And this deserves repeating. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And so, if the atrocities, struggles, strife, and woes we are experiencing is not condemnation, resulting from God's punishment upon all the earth for evilness and sin, what is it? Well, I've preached on this several times before, and I'm going to do it again. When Satan, that is Lucifer, rebelled against God, and the archangel Michael and his warrior angels battled against him and his followers, defeating him and expelling the entire lot from heaven, they, that is Satan and his followers, were cast down upon the earth. Quoting Revelation 12, 7 through 9. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Satan was held captive in hell for a thousand years, where upon the end of his thousand-year imprisonment, he was released again to run havoc upon the earth for a period of time. Quoting Revelation 20, 3. And he cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him, so that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. For a little while. The exact period of time is unknown. As Satan and his demonic forces are and shall have free reign on earth until such time as Christ's second coming, of which day and hour no man knows, and those in the flesh, not in the spirit, shall be caught completely unaware. And we quote Revelation 24, 36, 44. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, 
one will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched out and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. In describing one will be taken and the other left, Jesus is speaking towards the rapture. Though not specifically called by such, it is suggested in these passages, thereby filling all who believe with the hope and promise of being taken from the world to meet the descending Jesus during his second coming, saving all believers from enduring the terrible war and atrocities which shall ensue between Jesus and his heavenly army of angels against Satan and his legions. Now, brothers and sisters, the atrocities, struggles, strife, and woes we are experiencing are not God's handiwork, nor his condemnation poured out unto the world. Rather, it is Satan and his forces of evil plying his trade upon the earth, as prophesied in the book of Revelation. As such, Christians should not be swayed or convinced otherwise, for the word of God is our truth, and salvation through Christ, through, through faith in Jesus Christ, by God's grace, is the rock on which we stand. Though what we are experiencing now is tragic and reaching the point of absurdity, absurdity. Rest assured, it shall only get worse. <laughs> and I'm not wishing to be the voice of doom. Rather, I'm simply adhering to the word of God. For we quote Mark 13, 19 through 27. For in those days there will be tribulation, as has not been seen since the beginning of creation, which God created until this time, nor ever shall be. And unless the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he chose, he shortened the days. And also quoting Matthew 24, 6, And ye will hear of wars and rumors of wars, See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. In conclusion, let us not be frightful in our hearts, in dismay or without hope, for through our faith in Jesus Christ we will be saved. Fear not physical death, for it is but a prelude of the glorious spiritual life we shall endure for all eternity in the presence of God and His Son on earth, the new earth. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we give thanks unto you this day for all and the promise of a better way through your love and our faith in your Son, Christ Jesus. We who are walking in the light see the signs of the end times upon us, and we are holding fast to your word, keeping our eyes towards the heavens and our ears tuned for the sounds of heavenly trumpets Signaling, signaling the triumphant return of Jesus. May we be forever under your grace and protection, shielding us from all evil until such time as we stand in your presence. For this we pray in the powerful and holy name of Christ Jesus. Amen.